Hi guys, welcome to GIF Music. My name's Alex, and I'm in the studio with Matt Jackson from Modal, who is the designer of the Craft Synth. So when you receive your Craft Synth, this is how it's going to arrive in pieces. But don't worry about it because it's really easy to put together, and Matt's going to show me what each part does and how easy it is to put together. Okay, Doke. So let's start with the brains of the operation, the main panel, which is the left cheek of the synthesizer. And that's got all your electronics on it. Um, it's also got what we call these headers, which are how it communicates with uh, and holds on to all the other parts. So that's going to also add to the strength and the st structure of the actual synth itself and help hold it rigid. That's it, that's right, yeah. Um, so that's the brains. We've then got the front panel, which has got uh, all of our potentiometers on for controlling all the parameters. Uh, it's got our LEDs and push button. Cool. It's always really nicely set out as well, so you can see exactly what the controls offer and, and what it can do from that front panel. That's it. Uh, we've then got our keyboard, if you like, which has got um, touchpads for playing notes and also allows you to control various parameters from there as well. We've got our rear panel, which has got the headphone and line out uh, 3.5 millimeter jack sockets on there and the right cheek. And we've got our connectors for connecting the parts together and our shafts for putting into the potentiometers. One thing I did want to mention as well, on the back of here as well, you've also got the USB connector. Mm -hmm. So it can also be powered by USB and it can also be powered by one of these battery packs which are sold separately. So it's really easy for people to start using it straight away. Also, you can control all the MIDI by USB as well, can't you? That's right. So with the battery pack, you can use it completely standalone. Um, when powered via MIDI, when connected to a computer, it's fully USB MIDI class compliant compatible. So you can use a door to sequence it. You can control any of the parameters plus more that you can't usually access from the front panel via MIDI CCs. You can use MIDI clock to sync the LFO and delay and so on. Lots more control over MIDI. So the USB can also be used to connect it to the iPad app, which is really useful because there's functions in the iPad app, which actually add to the synth and give it functions that aren't available from the front panel. I mean, what extra features are available through the app? Uh, so, for example, from the front panel, we've got a uh, low-pass resonant filter. Through the app or through MIDI CCs, we've got a morphable state variable filter, so you can do your um, high-pass, band-pass, and sweep between them. Um, also, from the main panel here, we've got uh, envelope presets, so you can quickly load up nice um, uh, amplitude and filter envelope presets through the app and through MIDI CC, you've got full ADSR control of both of those um, independently. Cool. So I guess as well using an app means that you can just make hundreds and hundreds of presets. There's no real limit to the amount that you could save. Absolutely. And then you can load some onto the synth, take it away and use it standalone to access those presets that you've made from the app. So you've received this on Christmas morning. Mm -hmm. You look at it and you think, OK, what are we going to do? How, how do we build it? Well, you've told me that it's really easy, and I imagine you can do it in a couple of minutes, but where would I start then? Which is the, which is the main panel to start with? Okay, so we'll start with, yeah, the brains, the left cheek, because uh, that's got most of the connectors on. So as right. we uh, slot in uh, each different part, we can then use the connectors to link them together. Right, okay. And they basically just fit over these little pins. That's right. So, so I take my um, brains, my uh, left cheek of the synth, and the front panel, they slot together, um, much like those um, s kind of pop-out slot together dinosaur models you might have had as a kid. And when you slot them together, the header pins line up inside next to each other. And then these connectors, or these connector blocks, um, we've got four that have uh, five pins on them, which are for all these five pin headers. Right, okay. And then we've got one which has got six, which is for the output. Should be um, visually easy to see which goes where. And then it's just a case of slotting the appropriate header over the pins, uh, which electrically connects them and also gives it a bit of rigidity as well so that it's nice and strong. So we'll just pop, pop all those on. Your grandma could build this then. Your brother, your sister, your mum, your dad could build this and It really is that straightforward. And the great thing is about it, I guess it's a really good learning tool as well because you're going to learn about the basics of synthesis. You're going to learn about building a kit synth and how easy it is to go together. And the, the, I guess the main thing is, well, you're going to have loads of fun making a lot of crazy sounds as well. Because mm -hmm. this is quite an advanced synth and it can do quite a lot. 
that's it. So it is a proper synthesizer. Um, it does everything you would expect a synthesizer to do and has all the features you would expect a proper synthesizer to do. Um, it just happens to be in a form factor that allows you to have a bit more fun with it and um, save on the cost as well. So we've got the... Pretty much built now. It's nearly there. We've got one more panel to go. So I put on the um, front panel. You saw I started with the front panel and one side cheek. Um, then I added the second side cheek so we could slot in the keyboard. Now we've just got the uh, rear panel, which has got our jack outputs on. So say absolutely no soldering. Um, uh, you might expect a synthesizer kit um, to have some soldering, but obviously as this is a, a product for uh, anyone with no prior experience of these things to use, um, it's just a case of slotting together and pushing on some connectors. So there they all are. So that's the, the main frame of it has already been built. So all you need to do is add these shafts then. That's so right. these just as simple as you, you just push them in and they'll click into place. That's right, yeah. So you can see um, they've got a kind of shape to them and there's a rectangular hole in there. So again, it's just a case of looking at it and see the orientation that they go in and then pushing them in. And one cool thing about these um, pot shafts is that Firstly, they're six millimeter splines, so um, you can potentially find some knobs that will fit on there. Um, but also, you can make your own if you want to get some right, moldable okay. plastic or whatever it is you like to use, or 3D printing. You can make your own shaped knobs to go on top of these and really make it your own. So then as soon as this is built, which it looks like we were at that point, yep. all we need to do is power it. That's it. So that's done. And, and plug a, a 3.5 mil jack in. That's it. So we've got our USB mini here. Yeah. So we'll pop that in and we should see some lights going. And then we've got our uh, jack connector going to our line output. There so we once go. they flash then, it's all booted up and it's all ready for you to start working then. That's right, ready to go. So we're just going to check that the front panel's properly connected. Um, so I'm going to play a sound by pressing one of the pads here. And I'm going to turn our first control here, which is the wave shape, and we should hear that sound uh, change. So we know that's working properly because as I turn the knob and the sound's playing, you can hear the wave change in the sound and the timbre of the sound change. As I move on to our second control, which is mix, again, I hold the note and we turn that control, we'll hear the, the uh, oscillators mix, which again will be reflected in a change in tonality. So we can hear a proper change in the sound there. We know that that's um, all connected and working as it should. Next is our um, LFO rate, so I'm going to hold the tone, turn that control, and we should hear again a change in the sound. So moving on to the LFO amount. There we go, all good. Uh, moving on down to the second row, we've got our uh, oscillator to detune. So as I play a sound and change that, we should hear the oscillator change in pitch. All good there. Uh, we then have our spread control, so we should hear the sound becoming uh, nice and thick and rich, and then going back again as I turn it back. All good. And finally, our two filter controls. Um, first one is resonance. So I'm going to set my uh, filter control down a little bit, just about halfway, so I can hear that properly. Of 
volume as I do that. And lastly, the filter cutoff. So that's all of them, all connected properly and working as they should do. Okay, so you've built your synth, you've plugged it in, but it's not working. So what could it be that's wrong with it then? Uh, well, there's not a lot that could be wrong with it. So if you're finding that you've got no LEDs lit or it's not making any sound at all, uh, you might just want to check that you've got the USB cable inserted properly at both ends uh, and that you've also got your uh, jack lead connected or your headphones connected properly. That sounds like a joke, but my phone would work a lot better if I remember to plug it into the wall yeah. and plug it into <laughs> the USB cable. Also, as you turn it upside down or you touch the sides, you might find a sound's triggered. Um, because of the way that these connect, the touchpads uh, are actually open on the side here, so you can trigger a sound by touching it there. So that's not going to break the synth, is it? It's not going to damage it? Absolutely not. And you can use it to your creative advantage if you want to as well by touching the synth in various places to trigger sounds. If we flip it over and have a look underneath, um, if anything's not working as it was um, when we ran through it just then, it's just a case of looking at these contacts here and checking that they're all lined up so they completely cover the header pins. Um, you shouldn't need to force anything at all. It should slot on nicely. And as long as they're all connected, that's all you need to do. As you said, there's, there's no tools that you need to build this. It literally is. You slide it together. It fits together really well. It's been manufactured like that. You basically line the pins up. You add the covers to them that, that hold them in place. And, and, and that's it. Good to go. That's it. Okay, so that was a brief introduction on how to build a synth and get it to a situation where it's ready to start making music. Thank you very much, Matt. Pleasure. And if you want to find out more about the synth, all you need to do is visit the Gear for Music website. Thanks for watching.